Microfocus, creators of visual programming tools for software development, is pleased to provide major funding for the Computer Chronicles, the story of this continuing evolution. Well, Gary, it may not look like it, but I'm shopping right now. Uh, at a place called CompuStore, which I've accessed through the source here, and I'm looking for a video cassette recorder. And what the computer is showing me right now is various machines which are uh, in the uh, CompuStore inventory. And if I want to see details, say, on one particular machine, I can ask it to give me a little more description about that one machine listed as number one. If I wanted to buy the machine, I could just type in some commands, buy the machine, it would automatically charge my credit mm -hmm. card, and, and so on. What we're talking about today is, is hard to define, frankly. It's sort of online databases or telecomputing or information utilities. Uh, it, it's hard to describe. One phrase we hear is time sharing. Is this really traditionally what we mean by time sharing? Well, time sharing is a, it's kind of an old term. It's been around for several years. And it's a situation where many people share the use of a large computer system. Uh, but Personal computers sort of took away a lot of the, stole away a lot of the customers from timesharing services because they're less costly and you know, a lot more convenient to use. But personal computers really don't compete very well with large computer systems when it comes to accessing large information bases. So this is where timesharing systems may make a comeback in the form of information services as, a, as a, accessing a, through a personal computer or a terminal to a large information base if it can be cheap enough and convenient enough to use. Okay, we're going to be looking at some of the major data online databases, such as the Source, Dialog, and CompuServe. But in addition to those, there are nearly 2,000 specialized online databases serving a variety of specialized interests. For many specialized users of databases, the key to a useful and usable system is information selection, the ability to search through massive amounts of data, locate multiple sources and references, and relate them in a number of different ways scientific and technical fields, business and medicine, a database search can squeeze an hour or a month's worth of research into a few minutes. In the field of biotechnology called crop genetics, plant genes are manipulated to produce new varieties in which desirable traits from several plants are combined. Because of the extreme complexity and often experimental nature of this research, a worldwide bank of information is a very valuable tool. In this example, a search is initiated through a vast chemical database to find any documents referring to a particular chemical as it affects the reproductive abilities of wheat. The chemical's reference number is listed in a separate database of over 5 million chemicals. When the number is plugged into the document database, it locates studies going back in five-year increments and displays a summary of each. To characterize a database as an electronic filing cabinet is to underestimate its power by indexing and cross-referencing the ideas and research of a thousand minds the database offers its creative user an organized way to connect and relate ideas used to its full potential it can find solid support for a vague theory and bring even distantly related ideas together Joining Gary and me now are our two guests for this first portion of the program, Jay Fitzgerald, who's West Coast Regional Manager for The Source, and Paul Schindler, West Coast Editor for Information Systems News. Gary. But Jay, it, it looks like all you really need to get at all these data services are a, a personal computer or a terminal and a modem of some sort. And what does that give you access to out there in the world? Well, uh, among other things, it will give you access into The Source Telecomputing Corporation's <laughs> computers. Um, the source is a very general, broad-based type communications and information retrieval type service. Uh, it's a little bit different uh, than dialogue, which we'll see later, uh, in that it, it doesn't go into such great depth. Uh, it applies itself more to current events. Uh, we have on the screen right now what we call our, our main source menu, uh, outlining some of the, the broader categories which we can go into. The menu is designed as, as a, a a routing or a navigational system down through to the services that we wanted. Uh, we're going to go into item number six, which is mail and communications, and it's going to take us down one more level of menu. And from here we have options of uh, electronic mail, which is item number one, chat, which is an interactive 
use of the system. We can talk to another user who is online presently. Uh, our post system is a, a bulletin board type system where users can post messages about different topics to other users and, and get replies back and helps to the, help with their problems. Participate is a conferencing system and we have uh, mailgram messages and ecom messages which are sending messages out to non-source users through either the mailgram system or the US mail's ecom system. Okay, Jay, could you go in there now and see if there's mail waiting for you for sure. example on this? Sure. If we choose option number one we're given another menu and we can ask number five to read our mail. And it's now okay, going to... It's now, it's checking the, the mailbox or the account number for any incoming unread mail. For you. For me. Right. And theoretically when it finds something, mm -hmm. it'll bring it up on the screen and you'll right. be able to read the message waiting for you on the screen. Right. And that was very reminiscent to the time-sharing days. <laughs> right. <laughs> Let's wait for the response. <laughs> right. So right. The first it? thing that it gives us is what we call our scan lines, and it shows us who the document is from, and you'll notice there's a friendly name there matched with it. So I... <laughs> you don't even want to know what that is. No? Okay. No. This is a... What we have is user STC053 is, is on the source right now and wants to know whether... He would if if I would like to talk to him. Tell him right, no. Here, here, come, <laughs> here comes the message. Now this isn't what I'd really consider a database uh, service in this particular case. Is there which of these things uh, you talk about participate and uh, chat and mail are any of those things considered? Uh, do you consider a database service? Uh, no, our, our database services um, are in the form of the UPI Newswire mm -hmm. uh, uh, management content service, which is. Um, uh, abstracts through business journals. Uh, we also provide um, uh, media general service, which is historical information on, on corporate uh, stocks. And yet I feel electronic mail, if I may say, is, is an important adjunct to uh, online database systems because, uh, or information utilities, to take that broader term that's starting to come into vogue. Uh, because information, useful information to you, is not necessarily limited to information generated by someone you don't know. Uh, to take my own personal case, uh, my newspaper has a correspondent in Tokyo. Uh, information from her is very useful to us. In fact, we pay her for it. That's why she's our correspondent. But uh, it's uh, sometimes more useful to me than information that I can get from UPI via the source or the Dow Jones wire via Dow Jones. So uh, I think it's part and parcel. Uh, you have to adjust your thinking a little to view it in those terms. But uh, if you have a modem on a computer and belong to a database service, electronic mail, I think, is an important adjunct to it. Well, in fact, that's uh, one of the things that can't be done, really, with a personal computer that's isolated. So it really is a service that uh, can't be done locally. Exactly. Jay, what are the, what kind, you have so many services available in something like the source. What do most users use, in fact? The, the heaviest usage is, is in the communications type services. The electronic mail and the post system are, are the most used out of, out of, out of that group. Um, following that, uh, people get quite heavily involved in, in UPI wire, uh, travel information, um, airline schedules, that type of thing, making reservations. Uh, post is your bulletin board system? Post is a bulletin board system, right. There's about 100 categories uh, where I, as a, as a user, say an IBM, personal computer user, I can post a message on the system where other IBM users can, can find it and respond to questions I might have about the system, um, hardware that I might have for sale, uh, any information I want to offer up about the, har uh, the IBM computer. Paul, well, you, you take uh, uh -huh. this up for just a second. You're talking about uh, uh, the airline services. Can I actually get a ticket written out and sent to me through the... Well, through not the directly service? through the airlines. However, you can tie into uh, our, our own online travel agency and order your tickets and your, your hotel reservations and your car reservations. And you get those verified out at the time that you're dialing Right. They, it, depending upon the time uh, constraints that you're under, they will either send you the tickets in the mail or you can pick them up at the, at the airport. So you can take your, your travel plan, plans from beginning to end through the system. Paul, well, you are a user of the source in addition to being a correspondent in this field. There are, frankly, lots of complaints that users of things like the source and CompuServe have about response time and complicated different commands depending on what part of it you're in. What, what are your perceptions as a user? 
Well, you can, you certainly hit the uh, nail right on the head. The, the most fertile area for development in all online database services is to make the interface easier. Uh, uh, personal computers help a great deal in this. Uh, he was at, you were asking me earlier about my source ID. Now, it turns out that to make life easier for me, I have programmed my ID and password into my personal computer. I push one button, and it does all that. And it takes me right into mail, which is the service I use most of the time. That's it. <clears throat> I also use two or three other services, CompuServe and Dow Jones, and the Dow Jones uh, ID is uh, 12 digits. Uh, I, I do happen to have it memorized, but why should I bother? That's an advantage that personal computers have, which make online services easier to use than if you had a dumb terminal. Still, what I want to know about the computer industry, uh, every Monday morning I call in, check the headlines on Dow Jones to make sure I should know what I'm working on that week for my newspaper. It's period I slash EDP01. I, friendly, that isn't. And a lot of work is being done in these areas. There is a great deal of work left to do, plus the response time problem. Uh, unlike poverty, response time is a problem that does respond to throwing money at it, however. Uh, and, the, and it becomes then a, a cost-benefit question. The uh, companies like Dialog and The Source uh, have worked very hard, I think, uh, perceptibly hard, and CompuServe, have worked very hard to increase the amount of equipment on their end of the process so that the response time is reasonable on our end as users. But there comes a point, a uh, peak load of every day, where you just can't meet it. And uh, you probably pretty well know when the peak load times are. In fact, it, it would probably be useful to people to know. Uh, you were telling me earlier what the bad times of day are to try to, uh, to call into the system. Of well, course, the, it varies by time zone. Yeah, the, the heaviest usage uh, tends to be in what we call our non-prime time, which begins on the East Coast. At, well, it begins straight across the country at 6 p.m. Eastern. But Eastern, Eastern time, right. Um, the, in California, in this particular area, your, your toughest times on the source, your slowest times, are going to be between 6 and 9 p.m. Okay, it's 6 o'clock here. We have 9 o'clock on the East Coast. So we have people at the end of the non-prime time there and the beginning of the non-prime time here. So we, we have virtually the entire country working in their, in their nighttime, their home hour, uh, their leisure hour on the system. So it will slow down just a little bit. Okay, Jay, we've been talking now about general information <coughs> utilities, the source, CompuServe, Dow Jones, and things like that. In fact, the oldest and one of the largest online databases is Dialog. And we'll take a look at Dialog. That's coming up in just a moment. Joining us now is Dr. Roger Summit. Roger is president of Dialog Information Services of Palo Alto. Roger, before we get into a demo of Dialog, just briefly tell me what kind of uh, service it is. Well, we're an interactive computer-based online information retrieval service, and our objective is to store on the computer basically all of the information that's been published in the last 10 years or so. We've principally been an institutional service serving uh, librarians and information specialists in major companies around the world. The advent of the personal computer has brought more end-user use, as we call it, uh, into using the service directly for personal interests and personal problems. Give us a demonstration of how you would use Dialog. Sure. A, a controversial uh, issue recently has been uh, Laetrile and uh, uh, the fact that it contains cyanide and possible damage from that. Uh, I will go into the National Library of Medicine database called Medline, which indexes some 3,000 journals and contains 4 million abstracts to see what it has on laetrile and cyanide. I've already logged into the database, so now I can just tell the computer to search out the words that I'm interested in. So I'll say select laetrile and cyanide. It'll go through these four million items and pull out those that are concerned with these two topics together. And I see I wind up with 16 items. So let's type out the first one. I just say type one, and it'll pull up the first of these 16 items. It says acute cyanide poisoning from laetrile ingestion. Well, that would be an interesting article to me if I had this concern. I can press another button here and order the, uh, a copy of the source document itself if I wish to. I can pull up the second item and again uh, uh, 
It contains cyanide intoxication from Laetrile, and I can order items like this, or I can print the entire 16 offline on the computer in Palo Alto and have them mailed to me. Roger, what are some of the different uh, databases that are available? Well, we have databases in virtually every area of business, uh, of uh, medicine, of engineering, of science, of technology, and directories. We have things like Who's Who, Chemical Abstracts, Engineering Index. Um, and how up-to-date are these? Uh, they, uh, they, someone really watching each database consistently to make sure they're up-to-date? Yes, well, mo the professional societies uh, collect literature that they send to us on tape. We update the databases daily, weekly, and in some cases monthly. But it's always quite up-to-date. One of the things that we talked about earlier was the cost and convenience of personal computers and just uh, whether these uh, large information services can be as, as cost-effective or as convenient. And uh, one of the things you worked with here is what we, I guess, call a query language, uh, the interface to the user. How free is that, uh, free form is that uh, query language that you have? Well, it's, it's fairly free form. Uh, we're basically describing our interest using and or and not logic mm -hmm. with keywords uh, that, that we put into the computer. Uh, in terms of the uh, personal computer, one thing to think of is that uh, dialog is, is a peripheral of some 140 gigabytes uh, to your personal computer at the end of a telephone line. Okay, and we talked about cost here. What do you think the cost would be, say, for this particular query that we just made? Well, I can just do an end here, and it'll tell me that uh, this would be $4.21. Now, we haven't been searching very tight. We've been sitting here and talking, so if I were to actually do this, it would probably be substantially cheaper than so that. So if we were doing something with, a, let's say, a homework exercise, maybe a might cost ten dollars to. <laughs> well, it might cost two dollars. It yeah. might cost mm -hmm. uh, four or five dollars. Yeah. We have an after-hours service called Knowledge Index that takes our our principal databases and offers those at forty cents a minute. So it's uh, even cheaper than the daytime service. Where where is the the future of these kinds of online online databases going? I mean, will we ever get to the point where we could, for instance, have graphics uh, come up on this terminal? I think the main, the, the first direction this is going is towards source documents, toward the full text of the articles themselves. We have a major project underway to put on all of the source documents behind Magazine Index, which is a popular literature database that we have. We have the full text of the Harvard Business Review online. We have the UPI Newswire coming in online. So there's a movement toward full text so that you don't have to order these by mail. It seems like there might be a, an area of competition, say, for again for small computers and that would be say in databases that don't really change very much and uh, uh, using say video disks where you have maybe a gigabyte of storage up to a gigabyte of storage uh, on a single disk and do you see any competition or any future directions of use of video disks to su su uh, supply some of this? I think uh, perhaps in specialized areas where there's intense interest uh, the coverage here is so comprehensive and the use density is so low that even with video disks on a personal computer, it's more cost-effective to store centrally and access as you need. Jay, uh, talking about the source again, do you, do you have problems, or maybe, Roger, you have the same problem, in not being able to keep up with the demand? I know one of the complaints about some of these services are slow reaction time and slow to get on. Uh, is there a technical limitation to your ability to handle the demand? Well, certainly there's a technical limitation to any computers that, uh, that any outfit uses to provide this type of service. We have gotten ourselves ramped up to such a speed now where we can anticipate the demand, we can see what's happening down the road, and we can keep ahead of the demand for the system. Gary mentioned also video disk. What about cable? We hear an awful lot of talk about video, text, and cable, and cable is the real technology that will bring these kinds of services into the average home. Is there sort of competition between cable-delivered services and telephone-delivered services like yours? Well, at this point, we don't see that much, uh, although I'm sure it's going to begin to play a more and more important role as, as time goes on, as, as more and more cable systems are installed throughout the country. Uh, it seems at this point, however, the, the telephone systems that, that we're using are satisfying the needs of the customers. Um, but that's true uh, probably for the area in which you have uh, a network interface or an interface to, that you can call locally. But mm -hmm. I know that, in, say, yeah. in the Monterey area where I live, that, yeah. that the, uh, the cost of the long distance charges is, is very mm -hmm. high when you're yeah. accessing uh, services yeah. like this. Well, the, the primary networks that, uh, that I know the source uses and I, I, I believe Dialog uses are expanding out uh, weekly with, with new nodes in, in, in more and more relo uh, remote locations. Of course, as, as computers spread, uh, these nodes will be used and, and expanded on. 
We have a, about a minute left, Roger. One other question. Would it be possible to have, uh, say, a merger of things like database management software and something like Dialog, uh, a form of perhaps artificial intelligence, where the program itself could say, I need this piece of information which I don't have in my file, and I'm going to call up Dialog or the source and get it? That's a very good point. And I think a second direction that these systems are, are moving is in the direction of artificial intelligence. Uh, we're looking at uh, particular specialized areas, for instance, uh, a person's dossier, a dossier on a person, a dossier on a product, or a dossier on a company, very common kinds of things, can be done without uh, uh, any uh, explicit input of uh, commands. Mm -hmm. Okay, gentlemen, we're out of time. Thanks very much for showing us uh, both the source and dialogue. It's been very fascinating. And thank you for joining us on this edition of the Computer Chronicles. programming tools for software development is pleased to provide major funding for the Computer Chronicles, the story of this continuing evolution.